Now, simply accessing the command line arguments is relatively straightforward, but things can get a little more difficult. Let's have a look at an example of the tar command. This is a standard Linux command. Here's an example of an option. Now, the options conventionally begin with a minus sign. This is, is a Boolean option. It's either there or it's not. Minus V happens to be the verbose option. Here's an example of an option that takes an associated numeric argument. Minus B that sets the block size that tar will use for writing. Here's another example of an option, minus F, that has an associated argument to specify the name of the output file. Following this, we have some non-option arguments. These are the names of the files or directories that we want tar to put onto its archive. Now, parsing all of this out in traditional C string handling is possible, but it's beginning to look a little bit more like hard work. What makes it worse is that options are often combined. As you're well aware, the ls command has options minus l and minus a, and we can provide them separately, or we can run them together like this, and these two are equivalent. Applying that sort of principle to the tar command, we see here an example where the f option is run together with the v option, uh, but it still has this associated text file name to specify the name of the output file, and it's all starting to look rather complicated. Fortunately, there is a library routine called getopt, which, while it won't completely remove the pain of processing all these options, will certainly make it a lot easier. It looks like this. The first argument is just the argc that was passed into main, and the second argument is the rv list that was passed to main. And when you finish using getopt, it will in fact have reordered the arguments in the argv list so that the option arguments come at the beginning and the non-option arguments are pushed down to the end. Of course, typically they're entered in that way on the command line in the first place. The option string is just a string and it specifies what are the legal option letters that getopt is expected to recognize. Here's an example. A and B are here Boolean options. The colon following the N means that this option has a following argument. It doesn't say what the type it is. It doesn't say whether it's text or numeric. It just says that there is a following argument. And similarly, T is an option that has an associated argument that should follow it. The way you drive getopt is that you call it repeatedly in a loop and it returns each time the option letter that it's parsed out of the command line. And typically you do a switch on this, I'll show you an example in a moment, to process that option. And you loop over calls to getopt until it comes back with an EOF value to say that it's run out of options. To show you an example of command options at work, I want to revisit a program that we looked at in the last module. It was called listdir, and it traversed a directory uh, listing out the files that it found in it. And the idea here is to add in a minus a option so that it will only show hidden files, that is, files whose names begins with a dot, if we pass in the minus a option. Let's have a look at the source code. It's list dir 2 and we'll scoot down to the end here. I'll turn line numbering on. And the only real change to the logic of the program is line 81 here. Now we only list a file if either the name doesn't begin with a dot or this all flag variable is set. We'll see how that gets handled in a moment. So that's really the only change to the actual logic of listing the content of the directories. Now if we scoot up a little bit here you'll see all flag being declared here and initialized to zero. Then we start here with a loop on calls to get opt. 
Now, get opt is being told there is only one valid option argument, that is the minus A option. So uh, embedding the call in a loop is perhaps a little bit of overkill. Nonetheless, that's the normal way that the code is written. Each time round the loop, get opt will return here the option letter that it's parsed out. Uh, we do a switch on that. The only valid case is where it found a minus A option, in which case we set all flag to be 1, to be, to be true. If get opt finds an option letter it doesn't recognize, it will return a question mark and will come down here and we print out an invalid option message. Once we've fallen out of this loop, uh, at line 68, we adjust argv to move it past the option arguments to point to the first non-option argument. And similarly at line 69, we reduce arg c so that it now contains the count of the number of non-option arguments. Now, if you're wondering where these variables opt in and opt opt come from, they're actually uh, external variables. We expect there to be one non-option argument, so we're testing for that. Uh, if we don't have the right number there, we print out a usage message indicating that the user was supposed to supply a directory name as an argument and also hinting to him that he can optionally supply the minus a argument. But if all's well, uh, we go ahead, we chidder to the directory that the user has specified. The only difference here is that that argument is now in argv0, not in argv1, uh, because of the arithmetic that we did on argv uh, at line 68. So much for the code. Let's build it in the normal way. And first, let's try running it uh, without the minus A option. We'll run it on slash home. And we see here the subdirectories within slash home. Let's try it with the minus A option. And now we're seeing the hidden files as well. In this case, it's just the dot and the dot dot links. Let's try it with an invalid option. Minus X we'll add in. Uh, and you'll see that it does indeed report the invalid option. That was that error message I showed you in the code. Nonetheless, you can see it has still recognized the minus A option. Uh, finally, let's try doing it this way around with the option at the end. That's not the normal way you would write a command line, of course. But you'll see that the option is recognized and it works fine. So there's just a simple example of using a single option, minus A, to control the way that the program behaves. I'll show you one more example. It's called argdemo, and it is simply a, a demonstration of handling command arguments. It doesn't really do anything apart from that. So here's an example of what the command line might look like. It takes a couple of Boolean options, A and B, a minus N option, which introduces some numeric value, and a minus T option, which introduces some other string value. We have variables A flag and B flag here that record whether we've seen the minus A and the minus B options. They're, they're being used as Booleans. Num option will record the numeric value, that is the, the 400 in the example I showed you. And text option will receive the text value, that is the string purple in the command I showed you. And notice we're setting a default value for that. Let me just turn line numbering on here. We'll scroll down a little. Here's our loop on calls to get opt at line 18. Notice we are now saying we have minus A, minus B, minus N, and minus T options. And the N and the T options have a following argument associated with them. The A and the B cases are more or less as I showed you before for the list2 program. We set the appropriate Boolean flag. 
for the minus n option which takes a following argument which is intended to be numeric then we extract that following argument through the global variable opt arg we convert it to an integer and store it in num option there really ought to be some check there that it's a valid integer the t option is handled similarly uh, we pluck out the following argument from opt arg and we just copy it into the text option array that we saw the declaration of a moment ago so that completes the processing of all the arguments uh, when we fall out of the loop we're simply uh, showing whether the a and b options are set there and uh, what the associated numeric option and text option values are now of course we may have some non-option arguments and we process those here showing what they are uh, we've adjusted argv and argc as i showed you in the previous example and then we're just looping over the remaining arguments right we'll build it and let's try running it with no arguments at all to start with and we see that we have the default values for the numeric option and the text option let's supply a couple of non option arguments apple and banana and you'll see that the numeric and the text option of course still have the default values but these non-option arguments are correctly reported uh, we'll add a, a minus a option and we'll add in the numeric option with the associated value 400 and you'll see now that the numeric option value has been picked out and set to 400 and it has uh, recorded the fact that the A option is set. Let's do another one. Here we'll set the text option to be banana and the, we'll set the minus B option and the minus A option and we'll specify a couple of non-option arguments as well and it reports that both the a and the b option is set it's now set at the text option value correctly and it's picked out the non-option arguments so there's an example of dealing with a, a slightly more complex command line now there is one thing that i have not dealt with here which is the use of long options which is the the options that begin with two minus signs these are quite common in many of the GNU applications now there is a library routine for dealing with these in the same way as getop deals with the traditional options but it's not something that I've presented here